Hello everyone, my name is Pixorus and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you're all having a good day. I am having a great one. Today is the day. We are finally gonna do it. We're gonna build something around our storage room here and it's gonna be quite the epic build. I've been planning this in creative mode and it's taken me a while simply because of the sheer scale of this thing and trying to figure out how we're gonna make a build this big actually look good. I'm used to building on a bit of a smaller scale than this, believe it or not, and this build style does not necessarily lend itself super well to expanding beyond cozy starter houses. But I think, I think I've come up with something that's kind of a combination of a, a manor house and a barn and a few other things. It's fitting the rustic style of this local area pretty well, and it might even have some places that we can house our villagers so they don't have to live in these little wooden boxes outside here on the plains anymore. But it's going to require a lot of resource gathering, so one of the things I'm going to recommend right up front is that we go and do some resource gathering before we start the build itself. That way we don't have to be interrupted mid-flow of building to go somewhere else and grab a bunch of resources. So one of the first places I'm going to go is here to the desert, because we need to gather a decent amount of sand, but mostly some sandstone. Now sandstone can be crafted by grabbing four sand and crafting it together in a crafting interface, but unfortunately you lose a lot of blocks by doing this, because you're converting four blocks of sand into one block of sandstone. And I honestly have never been happy with this crafting ratio when you consider that sand is not a renewable resource and you need it for a variety of other things like making glass and concrete powder and a few other bits and pieces. So instead, we're gonna dig down through the layers of sand to get to this layer of sandstone. And sandstone is pretty much abundant in deserts in the same way that sand is. For three or four layers, underneath the sand, sometimes even more if the terrain has been built up, you'll find a significant layer of sandstone before you dig down and just hit a natural stone layer. So where the terrain of this area allows, we are going to be carving away the sandstone in order to grab some building materials for our house, because I want to make a decent amount of the roof of this out of sandstone, and you'll see exactly how that fits into the build in a minute. Of course, one of the things we have to be aware of when we're gathering massive amounts of sandstone is that if we dig up into the ceiling too much, the sand is going to fall in on us and you just want to make sure that you don't end up in a situation where it falls on you and you get suffocated by it. But fortunately with a pickaxe this efficient, and I believe you can even do this with a regular diamond pickaxe that has efficiency 4, sandstone can be mined instantly, so it's nice and easy to get hold of a bunch of it in large quantities. It is considered kind of a softer material than stone, so it has a slightly faster time to break. Returning from the desert with basically a full inventory of sandstone, we're going to throw a bunch of this into our super smelter so that we can turn it all into smooth sandstone. Looks like we're going to keep nine stacks plus a little extra of regular sandstone, and we're going to put the rest of the sandstone in the furnace to be smelted. Some of the remaining sand we're going to put in a furnace over here, and we're going to make sure that that gets smelted down into glass. We shouldn't need the rest of the sand, but if we need a bit more glass later, we'll know where to go. The other major thing we needed for this build was terracotta, so I've gathered a bunch of that already. We need a bunch of the different wood types as well, because I want this to look like quite a nice pretty build from the outside, and so I'm going to include a bit of mangrove wood, even some of the crimson stem from the nether, which we'll probably need to farm a little bit more of, although it's used fairly sparingly. We need a whole bunch of spruce wood, probably some jungle as well, and those are the easiest trees to farm because they can be grown in that 2x2 two two formation that produces a larger tree. And there's a bunch of other materials like deep slate that we'll need a lot of, but thankfully we have a lot of that, so I think we're ready to start the build. One of the first things I like to do when approaching a build in this scale and in this style is to mark out the boundary of the build. And in this case, we're making sure that we have enough room between where the redstone and the storage area starts and the facade so we can make the facade potentially a couple of blocks thick, give ourselves a bit of room for some detail and depth in the exterior so that we can layer material between these wooden pillars, which are actually going to form part of the front face of the build and around the outside we're going to be framing things out with spruce logs as well. So we're going to make sure that we come out three blocks, leaving these three block panels that we can decorate with various things. And then we're going to make a 90 degree turn here and come along the side of the build, once again leaving three blocks between us and the redstone. The front facade of the build is actually going to be brought out by one more block. It's going to be extruded slightly from the face of the building just to give it a bit more depth and character and so it's not just a flat wall at the front of the building, but the rest of it actually conveniently 
conveniently wraps around to leave three blocks between the pillars and this next section of redstone. So the maths actually works out in our favor here and we can come one, two, three blocks out. Once again, we turn a 90 degree turn. We start making the front facade of the build on this side and this build is actually going to have rotational symmetry. When planning this, I realized that the whole area was basically a plus shape and that allowed us to create a build which was the same on all four sides. But instead of just being a straight up cube, we're going to exaggerate the plus shape with the exterior of this build and simply rotate the build by 90 degrees every time we build a wall of it. So I've only had to design one quarter of this build in creative and I know what the entire thing is going to look like. Naturally, we need to do a bit of excavation here because while I do want a couple of the faces of this build to be buried in the hillside, we at least need to make sure that from the inside it's going to look roughly the same. So I am going to dig out these areas here and where the front face of the build is going to go will have it emerging from the dirt on this side. And with a little extra effort I've now dug out a trench around the outside of this build so that I can fit in all of those spruce log pillars which is a lot of extra material that I've gathered so plenty of stone. Unfortunately we're not really using stone much in this build. In fact the outer walls of this build are going to be relying on a couple of different wood gradients. So we're starting with one that begins with dark oak on the bottom and then a layer of spruce and then a layer of oak and then a layer of birch and each of these are going to be stripped logs so we end up with this really nice gradual gradient that I've used plenty of times in the past but normally while I use it for floors this time we're using it for walls. We're going to build up the spruce logs as a frame around the outside of this and we're going to have a cross beam going across here then the spruce logs are going to continue upwards and above that we're going to have a different wood gradient. This one is more of a warm wood gradient though we're going to start at the bottom with jungle logs since they're probably the closest to the lighter wood of the birch below. Then we transition into acacia for that really bright orange, mangrove for a slightly deeper red, and then finally the beet color of crimson stem. And once we've stripped all of those, that's going to be a pretty bright combination. The trick is that we're going to be framing these with some dark oak stairs, which are going to give kind of an arched feel to this. And that's really going to mean you don't see as much of the brighter of these colors. We might even include some trap doors down the center just to break up the texture of this a little bit, give it a bit more character. Although maybe we'll just do those on the top layers. Either way, we're going to grow some more crimson fungi just so we can get a bit more crimson stem. And then we're going to go around the outside with a couple of stacks of wood and create these three block panels. Basically everywhere we have a three block wide space. Okay, now we have a bunch of these wall panels built up and I haven't detailed absolutely every one of them yet because I'm still trying to see where I can conserve wood, but... As we go around here, you'll notice I've left a gap in the corner, and that's because my initial plans for this involved rotating the plus shape for a second story that was going to come out basically at 45 degree angles from the 90 degree angles we've already built. And through the build process, that kind of evolved into really just having another fatter shape overlaid over the top of it. So this section here is actually going to come out, is going to be made out of blackstone and deep slate, and it's just going to form a sort of corner tower on each of the four corners where these walls intersect, just to change up the shape a little bit, add some variety and add a bit of different texture. So we're not going to work on those quite yet, instead we're going to work on this front wall here, because once again this will form the template for the other four entrances, I guess you could call them, although I'm not actually going to enter via two of them, the one on that side and the one on that side. This one over over here, we might actually turn into a place we can have a nether portal directly into our storage system. For that, I'm going to drop off all of the different logs in here, with the exception of some spruce wood, which I guess we'll keep on us, and some dark oak wood. I think we'll need to keep some of that as well. And then we're going to grab a bunch of this terracotta. I think I'll bring maybe eight stacks with me to begin with, because we're going to dye a bunch of this green with the cactus that we've been farming up here at our cactus farm, which, as you can see, has been producing a decent amount. And earlier, I actually put a stack of it in a furnace in our blacksmith shop, ready to be smelted down into cactus green. So we got a couple of furnaces with that, and we should be able to just craft all of this into green terracotta. There we go, eight stacks of green terracotta later. We're also going to have some light green further up in the build, but down here at ground level, we're going to be using the darker color. And so the lighter color can be saved for further up, where it feels like it might have caught the sun a bit more. Once again, we're going to be building this one block reset from the outer pillars of the walls just to give it a little bit of depth. We're going to come up three or four blocks, I think four blocks 
up there, and then we're going to put in a layer of dark oak planks, kind of on the same plane as the wood logs from the outside to make it look like the whole build is supported by a timber framework. We're going to continue the green terracotta up from there. We're going to have another four block panel and at the top of this we're going to put two spruce logs facing outwards to support the next layer of material. We're also going to add another spruce log facing outward here to support some additional stuff to either side. If we hop on down and start the next pillar on this side we're going to be doing the same thing here and we're going to lay a row of spruce logs over the top top of that, kind of like they're holding up this big wooden beam. On top of either of these logs I'm going to place some spruce planks and that's where our next wall of green terracotta is going to begin. Dangling from between these two planks we're going to place a lantern and we're just going to cover up the back of that with another green terracotta so that there's no gaps in the build. Just above our row of dark oak planks I'm going to lay a set of spruce slabs, their bottom half slabs so that nothing will spawn on there and the light up there is going to help as well but those just help the build feel a little more connected. Before we go too much further I'm just going to mirror this on the opposite side with another identical wall of green terracotta. The next thing I'm going to need is some mud bricks so I'm going to grab a couple of stacks of mud, we'll stash the dirt away for now. We can always convert a bunch of that into more mud later. And we need to combine this with some wheat. We've turned all of the packed mud into mud bricks and then we can use the stone cutter to turn all of those mud bricks into mud brick walls. Hopping back up here, our next panel of green terracotta is going to have these mud brick walls inserted into it to form this kind of stripe that has, once again, a little bit of a recess to give it a bit more depth. And I think mud bricks and green terracotta go really well together. They're both kind of earthy, natural looking colors, which I think go really well with the theme of this build and it being built into the hillside here. So finally, a few extra blocks of terracotta on top of that, and this is where we can start shaping out the roof line of this build. But we need to work on how this is going to join to the other side. So underneath these logs, we're going to have them supported by a spruce slab on either side, and that's going to come inwards like so to begin the sort of lattice of spruce slabs that's going to feel like it connects the two sides of this archway. To make it feel a little bit more like an archway, way we're actually going to bring in some dark oak planks here which have a similar kind of color to the spruce wood the sort of warm brown that we're going to be popping in on either side here and arching in towards the middle like this we'll come up another couple of blocks with the dark oak planks we'll need to craft a few more of those and now we can actually start to expand the frame of this outwards and have these logs support another set of beams across the top. Then we build our lattice of spruce slabs with this kind of alternating half block pattern in the middle. Stepping back a little bit that now looks like a bit more of a convincing entrance way and we can mirror this wall on the opposite side and then we'll start to add some details to the center. The timber frame is going to come out by one more block and in the middle here we're going to have a window surrounded with moss to really emphasize this natural theme we're going with. The moss is going to be interspersed with spruce planks where the walls connect to the outer frame here and in the middle of these walls we're actually going to set some panes of glass to form a window. You'll notice that the mud brick walls here actually line up with the mud brick walls on either side creating this kind of broken up stripe of material across the front of our build. To either side of our window frame here, alongside these spruce planks, we're going to have a couple more logs poking out to support the roof, and we're going to design the roof kind of similar to the ones we've already got on our starter house and the blacksmith's house, where it's supported by these spruce logs, and then this sort of timber frame out of spruce slabs and planks is going to take shape on the end. Underneath these jutting logs, just to help frame out the window even more, we're going to add three fences and a mud brick wall attaching it to the side of the house. The glass panes in the central window here are going to be white to really highlight this as the center of the build. And directly above that window, we're going to place one of our new verdant frog light blocks so that we can have some light in the build. And we're going to hide that behind a panel of trap doors, which will help this build feel a little bit more visible and welcoming at night. Now moving on from our green terracotta for a second, we'll need to bring that back when we do the other three entrances. We're going to grab a bunch of the materials that we will need for a gradient of materials in the roof. Yes, this is the like three gradients along with our Neapolitan ice cream pattern here in the build. We're going to have a lot of different material. We're going to need some more jungle wood, which we're going to strip. We're going to bring the sandstone with us. And this is where we're going to retrieve all of the smooth sandstone that was cooking here in our furnaces. We're going to bring some more of the spruce logs with us as well, because we'll need those to start making the timber frame for 
for the roof. And that's going to poke out a couple of blocks here, similar to how it does on the roof frame for the blacksmith's house and the starter house. On top of this, we're going to come up two blocks and add a slab on top of that. And this is going to form the start of a roof line going backwards. Around the corner here, we're going to have one more block jutting out of the side. And then in a similar way to how the roof line works on these houses, we're going to have a slab over the top of this log and a slab next to the log with another spruce log coming up for support every three blocks. We'll do more of that once we've done a roof for this lower section. Before we do that though, I'm going to lay out the main gradient of the roof, which is going to start with stripped jungle logs. To continue the ridge of our roof upwards, we need two planks like so. We're going to come over one block with a plank and a slab on top of that. Two planks coming up from that and we kind of follow that pattern up ending with a slab here, a plank or two there and maybe another slab on top like so. And you'll notice this is in the middle because that's directly above the frog light that we've already put down there. And now the next set of materials we're going to use is going to be oak planks with a slab over the top of those. And you'll notice that like the other houses we have built, this follows a one and a half block roof pitch. So these blocks down here, the logs are actually like half buried in this slab here, so there's one and a half blocks visible. Then I've chosen a material that has a slab of the same texture, so these oak planks have a slab coming out of here. Our next layer is actually going to be made out of stripped oak logs, and these get slightly lighter than the oak planks simply because they don't have the darker stripes of the plank texture. And once again, because of the slab in front, we see one and a half blocks visible of this texture as well. Then we hop up here, we're going to switch to birch planks. Once again, layering some slabs over the top of those. Above that, we switch into stripped birch logs, which are going to have a slightly lighter texture once again. Above that, in a similar fashion, but even lighter, we have this sandstone, which once again, we can cut into slabs. And the final ridge to the roof is going to be made out of smooth sandstone, probably the cleanest and lightest block that we're going to use in this whole palette. So that right there is our roof gradient. And it seems like an odd jumble of materials when you first put it up there, but placed together, I think those all look really nice. And it creates a lighter ridge across the center of the roof. But this roof isn't going to be able to come all the way down to the very edges of the build. In fact, for stylistic purposes, we actually want that to be a more central upper roof structure where this lower roof is going to be darker and a little bit more plain. It also requires fewer additional wood types, so I'm going to put some of these away so I have space in my inventory. In fact, what this is mostly going to require is spruce wood and deep slate tiles. So we're going to grab a bunch of those and we'll be turning some of these into slabs as well. To begin with, we'll outline the edge of the roof here and it's going to start to slope down as it reaches the outside of the build, but we're going to start with a row of planks with a row of slabs on top. And keeping the same thickness of materials, so effectively three slabs high, we're going to bring this down by half a block each block over. So eventually, once it reaches the corner of the roof, it's actually going to droop over the edge of these logs, which is why I'd left out this corner here. Next to that, a half block higher, we're going to create this ridge of deep slate tiles. So we're going to end up using some slabs just so it peeks over the top of the spruce blocks in front of it. It's going to follow exactly the same path down and trail over the edge of the roof like so. In fact, we can actually knock out the entire framework here. I wasn't sure how much of this I kept from the creative build as I was working out the wall structure, but yeah, we can remove most of that. Each time we reach one of these spruce pillars, though, we're going to add another ridge of these deep slate tile slabs. But what we can do here is simply suspend the slabs in between each section of the deep slate tiles. And then once we reach the end here, we're going to add another pillar made out of spruce logs. That's going to have another log jutting out here, and that will support the line of the roof from these spruce slabs. And between the pillars, we're actually going to return to our green terracotta. Our first panel of green terracotta here is going to be four blocks wide. That's just how it ended up with the pillar alongside here, but then between these two pillars, we're going to have a wall that is three blocks wide, and that leaves us the perfect opportunity to put in a window. We'll have oak trap doors along the top here and along the bottom there. We'll open all of those so that the window is recessed. And either side of that, we can add some fences, a fence gate in the center here as a kind of window ornament, and then we'll frame out the top of this using some more spruce slabs. They're going to have to go across the top like this with a point in the center, and so we're going to build up the rest of the spruce slabs behind that. And that's going to form a 
nice little bump in the roof line which will actually break up some of the textures that we've got here and help them feel a little less repetitive. Alongside this section here, we're not going to have a window in this wall. This one's going to be completely blank and it's actually going to turn a corner right here into the next wall over. We're going to bring this wooden pillar up from where it naturally occurred as part of the frame of the building. We'll have it jut out one more so that it can support a little extra bit of roof line that's just going to connect this one to the corner tower that we're going to be putting in here and that means if we frame out a section of wall here with another three block wide gap we can put in another window right here actually with the thicker part on the bottom that makes more sense and then we'll add the six trap doors in for a window as before we'll throw a couple more deep slate tile blocks in to seal off this part of the build because the section that juts out here is actually going to be made mostly out of deep slate tiles with a couple of blackstone and mud blocks thrown in in fact we might as well do that now so from ground level we're just going to come out three blocks from this pillar and three blocks from this this pillar so that they meet on a corner. We'll do a couple of layers like that, but then we'll start to pepper in a bit of blackstone brick. We'll start to muddle in some of the deep slate bricks as we go upwards here. We're going to have maybe a couple more on here and have a blackstone brick or two creep into the texture here and here. But this is really where the deep slate brick will start to take over a little bit more. We'll maybe have one more blackstone brick on the corner there and then we'll fill out the rest of this. But then we'll come back in and add a couple of mud blocks and you'll actually be surprised at how similar the colors in the mud block texture are to deep slate, especially at a distance. So that's going to form the foundation of our corner tower and as we get up back up to the roof we can continue this line of spruce slabs separating the lower texture of deep slate and mud and whatnot from the plainer texture of this green terracotta. We're going to dress up the window in this green terracotta wall in exactly the same way as we did the one around here. So we'll add in the fences from up here this time, add the slabs as a canopy over the top, and that's simply going to blend into the continuing roof line of spruce slabs. Once we turn the corner, we're going to treat this roof exactly the same as we did this one. So we'll remove this upper layer of stairs and logs, connect everything up with these deep slate tiles and spruce slabs, and that is is now looking a lot better built up. <laughs> That's looking really cool actually. I'm very happy seeing this come together in survival. And in case you thought we've hidden the crimson wood away entirely, you can still see a little peak of it underneath there. That beetroot color is concealed until you get right up close to the building. So we're going to finish off the roof line on this side over here as well. Then we're going to complete the end of the facade here and build out the rest of the roof along this quarter. And once we've done that, all we really need to do is build the same thing with a 90 degree rotation. So we need to build it on this side and then rotate it 90 degrees again to build on that side and on the final side over there at the front. Okay, so back up here on our facade, we're going to add a couple of blocks to support the roof line here. We're actually going to make sure that this has a bit of a dip behind here. Then this section in front can arch to match and it kind of creates a little arch over this alcove on each side. And then we're simply going to bring in the block textures that make up the roof line on each side. So we're going to start with some jungle logs stripped there. We're going to have the oak planks going into the middle. <laughs> I'm going to try not to fall off the scaffolding too much. Then we're going to bring the stripped oak log texture in towards the center as well. Then follow suit with the birch planks, the stripped birch, the sandstone, and finally the smooth sandstone, making this pretty straightforward pattern up to the top. Of course, we'll need to make sure that we mirror this on the opposite side, and I'm going to start the line of the roof going that way as well, but the central section should now look like this, complete with a couple of end log textures where they have to wrap around into the roof line on the other side. This is where we're going to add our panel of trapdoors, so we're going to add six more trapdoors around the outside of the frog light, and like the timber frames that we built on the other houses, this is where we're going to have a bunch of connected slabs and blocks, which are going to give this roof a pattern of its own. Of course, it doesn't matter exactly how this is laid out. I think the most important thing is that it's symmetrical, but in the end, mine's turned out looking like this, and I think that's pretty nice. <laughs> now we're going to bring all of this, the jungle, the oak, the birch, the sandstone, and the smooth sandstone up to the rest of the roof, and we're going to continue the line following this roof ridge around where these spruce slabs are already laid out. When we reach an inside corner like this, we're simply going to pick a direction for the logs to go. We're not going to overthink that part of it too much. But when we reach an outside corner like this, we are simply going to let the end texture show and carry on around the corner this way. And once the roof is all done, we step back and <laughs> not bad, right? Honestly, I've been working from screenshots of this build from the creative mode test world where I built it. And even with that, I was still actually really happy to turn around and see how good that looks. So now we're going to do a quick bit of roof 
ornamentation at the top here and this is simply going to be a repeating pattern of a slab and a stair always facing inwards towards the center of the build. Once we reach this point here where it turns a corner we're going to continue the same pattern facing this way. Remove this corner block since the pattern isn't really going to make any sense if there's a stair facing one way or the other and we'll do the same thing over here once we built the timber frame on this side. So it's not looking too bad from this angle. Unfortunately from the other three angles there is barely a build here. As we step inside the storage room, it's still feeling very open on three sides, although this side is feeling pretty enormous, actually. Like, we're going to have to do a little bit of stuff to fill up this space, but like I said, we can move our villages up to a second floor where they're going to be nice and safe and be able to trade with us. We can do a little bit of decoration on the inside of here, and we've left ourselves ample room behind all of these storage filters to do a little extra decoration if it feels like it needs it. But for the moment, my priority is going to be copying this quarter of the build to the other three quarters. So I'm going to go ahead and do that probably on a live stream since it's just going to be a long repetitive task that will be exactly the same as everything you've just seen. And once we return, we will tackle what to do with the hole in the center of the roof. And after another four or five hours worth of building, this right here is the result. And I am very, very happy with this. I honestly thought it was gonna be difficult to beat the storage building that I made in season two. I really love the style of that. It was a more modern, kind of more interesting take on the storage room, but this, despite its reliance on symmetry, I think feels super impressive. And I'm really, really happy about that. Walking into this feels sort of like walking into a temple. Even though the gradient is very linear, I really like the way that came together on the roof. And the overall scale of the building really feels kind of impressive. And I have made sure that all of the sides are correct and that all of the details are symmetrical. I actually spent a little bit of time afterwards cleaning things up a little bit and, you know, filling in occasional blocks or slabs that I had missed and making sure all of the details on the ends of these were exact. From the inside, it looks perfectly symmetrical except for a couple of logs on the inside here and there when the emphasis has not quite been on the interior yet, simply because I don't know what I'm going to do with the interior design elements. I've just been focused on the exterior so far. I'm also not sure what we're going to do with lighting in here either. A lot of the lighting here is very temporary. <laughs> I've just kind of spammed torches around because I knew that the roof would be enclosed. And for the moment, in the center of the roof, what I'm planning on doing is building a sort of tiered garden of different crops. So we're going to have wheat, beetroot, we're going to have torch flowers and pitcher plants up there. I was originally planning on putting kind of like a penthouse building up there, but having looked at it a couple of times in creative, it feels like it spoils the overall impression that the outside gets to just have like a tiny house perched on top of it. So we're going to go with a tiered garden instead, and that's going to be a little bit less visible from ground level, which means it doesn't spoil the silhouette of the building, but still provides something for the center here and a practical purpose for that space. I know a lot of people might be tempted to put a big skylight here and just cover the entire thing in glass, but in my experience that never quite gives the impression that you want it to give, especially from the outside. So I think that's what we're going to go with. And for this tiered garden I will need some lime dye, which we don't have a great deal of right now. <laughs> Fortunately in all the time I've spent building this, the cactus farm has been running, so I can cook a couple more stacks of cactus and that will give us plenty of green dye that we can combine with white dye from bone meal or from lily of the valley, and we can get ourselves a lot of lime dye that way. So the other thing we're going to do with this roof garden garden is make it asymmetrical, which is going to seem a little bit weird and counterintuitive considering the extreme symmetry that we've applied to the rest of this build, but that's kind of the reason for it. I feel like at least one area of a build like this should kind of resist symmetry, have a tower or a chimney or something like that to break up the symmetry of the build, and in this case, I think the roof garden is going to be a really nice way to do that, mostly because it can be hidden from ground level, so you're not too concerned about the way it looks from the outside, but when seen from higher up, from the top of the mountain, or from in the air when we're flying around a little bit later, you should be able to see this roof garden and appreciate the fact that it's an asymmetrical part of this build. We can still work some symmetry into the individual components of the garden, though. So I'm designing this little garden plot here. It's going to have a few leaves and bushes around. It's going to have, you know, crops growing on all of this dirt, and we're going to hydrate 
dehydrate it using a simple technique really we're going to stick a leaf block in here and we're going to apply some water to that and leaf blocks can hold an entire block of water inside of themselves without it leaking through the bottom like happens if you end up waterlogging say a top half slab for example and i think on this patch here we can grow some wheat seems like a sensible thing to have up here that single water source should be able to hydrate all of the farmland around here but if it doesn't having something planted here will still allow it to grow and if we want the full effect already we can always apply some bone meal we can start to shape out the different raised beds by popping in some spruce logs here and that one's even going to conceal the water source but it won't block the hydration to any of this farmland we can start maybe a little three by three bed over here at the top here we're going to place another little circle of dirt with another leaf block we can waterlog in the center and maybe here we'll grow some beetroot we can have similar sections for carrots and potatoes and maybe some of these have started to become overgrown with moss so we can swap a few moss blocks in here and there and a short time later our little rooftop garden plot is complete i haven't done anything too tall on this the central section really only reaches four blocks out from our roof line and I managed to fit in a bunch more cool details, like the fact that we've got some cherry blossom petals down here, the pink petals. We've got some cherry leaves in here as well. A few areas where we could put in some moss carpet and azalea here and there. Some drip leaf as well, some small drip leaf that we gathered from lush caves previously. Got a little drip leaf garden around here with some wheat that isn't hydrated, but it should still grow over time anyway and these gardens are not really meant for harvesting they're really just meant to grow up here and be aesthetics but there's lots of color thrown in there we've got the yellow of the wheat the red beetroot the orange carrots we've got some pink coming in here from all of the cherry stuff around here the potatoes are this kind of nice golden color lots of green keeps everything in the sort of organic feel and the natural colors that we've already got elsewhere in this build and it's subtle enough that for now it'll just stay up there and if we want to replace it with something different later it shouldn't be too difficult to remove it honestly doesn't look too bad from the inside either i might have to cover that over with a more ornamental ceiling at some stage but i'm still not certain what i'm going to do with the second floor inside of here and Yes, this video is coming out a little bit later, but I do hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. Hopefully this has given you folks some inspiration for what you can do to expand a build style into a much larger build. And I'm so happy that we finally got to do some more building and we have a decent build around the storage system now. In future episodes, we're probably going to tackle the interior of this place, but I might just tinker with a couple of things between episodes and see what I can come up with. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. My name has been Pixel Riffs. Don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you folks soon. Take care. Bye for now.